Hello, dear friend. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Today's video is a little bit different from the ones you're used to seeing from me. Over the past month, I've filmed bits and bobs here and there, little moments of my days. And I'll be sharing them with you as I update you on my life as a writer lately. So let us start with a book recommendation, which is probably one of the best ways to start any video, right? Now that fall is here, I feel like my senses are heightened. Do you experience that too? I feel like every time the weather gets colder, I just become more in touch with everything. And I love that. I get that same feeling from one of my favorite writers of all time, which is Ray Bradbury. This particular novel, Fahrenheit 451, is a dystopian classic set in a future society where books are banned and firemen burn any that are found. The story then follows a fireman who starts questioning his role and begins to explore the forbidden world of literature. I'm always amazed by stories that explore the importance of literature in humanity. Other three great novels that do this are Last Train to Lisbon by Peter Bieri, The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon, and of course, The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. I hope I didn't butcher his name, but I probably did. Let me know if you've read any other stories like this, because I feel like it's definitely an element that I'm drawn to, and I really want to read more like it. This was actually my first time highlighting and annotating a book with a pen. I did it because this book was bought secondhand and was already written on, and I wanted to know if I preferred to highlight with a pen or a pencil. I think, at the moment, I'm still more comfortable with a pencil, especially when it comes to annotating newer books. I was actually introduced to Ray Bradbury from his short stories, which he's very well known for. In my 2023 media reset, I decided to start trying to write my own, and I've been working towards that goal ever since. The main problem I encounter when writing short stories is one I've mentioned previously in this channel, which is the fact that I have the tendency to start seeing them as potential novels. It's just so hard for me to develop a short story without turning it into a full-length novel or novella. Still, I've been working on it. 
I came up with a concept based on something that I was told as a child and which has stuck with me ever since. I remember when I first heard it, I knew immediately I'd never forget it. And yet, for many years, I didn't remember it. It must have been stored in the back of my mind somewhere. Once it did come back to me, however, it just made so much sense that it was there waiting for me. I don't know how to explain it, it just made sense that I should write about this. And so, it's a concept that's very dear and near to my heart. It's funny because when I first started writing, I tried to keep my stories as far away from my own life as possible. They were a refuge and a way for me to escape from my daily life. And I didn't want the two realities to mix. Or reality and fiction to mix in this case. However, the more I write, the more drawn I am to write about the things that are personal to me, the things that touch me and matter to me. I guess before I thought I ought to empathize with others, and so I wrote those kind of stories. But now I think that my story must not be so different from many others. What I've been through, what I've felt, others must have been through and felt too. And by exploring these feelings and empathizing with myself, I am making it possible to do so, to empathize with this kind of situation. And now that I'm away from those situations and those feelings, I'm also providing a different perspective that the people reading it might need or might find a relief to have someone else state it. I don't know. This is just something I've been thinking about. Actually, I always think of a quote by Neil Gaiman, which is this. If you're going to be a successful writer, at least if you're going to be the kind of writer who did the kind of stuff that I was going to do, you had to be willing to do the equivalent of walking down a street naked. You had to be able to show too much of yourself. You had to be just a little bit more honest than you were comfortable with. And if people judged you, if they felt they knew who you were, that was just something that you were going to have to live with. When I write, I'm naked. What's left is for me to be read. Hopefully you're gonna be able to read this story at some point in the future, hopefully the near future, and then you'll know what that thing was that I was told and how it sparked something in me. I haven't drafted it yet because I've been kind of stuck on deciding how to structure it without making it too long. When I started brainstorming it was going to take place in one day but I wanted to reference things that happened in previous years. And that's when I started wondering if it wouldn't be better to set the story in the period of time from the first meeting to the last. So the scenes in the story would span years, and whatever happened in that time would be shown instead of told. I like that idea, but for some reason I feel like I don't know how to execute it. I think sometimes when you don't know how to write something, you just need to sit down and do it and forget about the possibility of failure. You sit down, you write, and if it doesn't work, you sit down again and write again in a different way. And again and again until it works. It's so easy to want things to be right at the first try, but in reality that's not very likely to happen, is it? I think I need to hear this. And if you haven't started writing or been writing a project because you're afraid to write the wrong words, then you might need to hear it too. Stop thinking, start feeling. Start writing. Just a little pep talk. Something tells me I'll be drafting this story soon, so when I do it, 
I'll share that process with you. That's a promise. So, when I was working on my short story, Bonbon took my place on the chair. On this day, you can see that he found some space on my lap, but it wasn't comfortable enough for him to fall asleep. He sometimes takes a corner of my desk, but he can never stay there for long because there's no space for him to stretch. If you don't know, Bonbon has been my writing buddy ever since he was 5 days old. He grew up napping on my desk while I wrote on my notebooks or typed away on my keyboard. At the moment, however, my desk space is too small for that and I think that's one of the reasons why I keep feeling unsatisfied with my setup. I can't wait to get a desk big enough for the two of us and also a bunch of my books, of course. Anyhow, I changed my setup again, I basically surrounded myself with more books, but now I'm wondering if I should have made space for a cat bed instead. Bombo's history with cat beds is not great though, so I guess that wouldn't have been a good choice either. Now that the days are getting colder, I've been really enjoying early mornings. Not too early because I also love late nights, but early enough that I can spend time with myself without rushing to work. Working from home, it's so easy to just wake up, turn on the laptop, get into productive mode and suddenly the day is over, so you go to sleep. And the next day, you do it all over again and you forget you're alive. I don't want to forget I'm alive. So, I'm making an effort to connect with myself and to keep strengthening that connection. You already know what my current routine is, so I'm not gonna go into that. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my journaling habit. Recently I've been really feeling like sharing my system with you because I've become so passionate about it. But today you're getting a glimpse of what I do every day to stay mindful of my time, of how I use it and how it passes by. Recording my days has become a ritual that I really cherish, both in the moment as well as when I look back.
Something else I've been trying to do is to start my day with a nourishing meal. Let me know what your favorite nourishing breakfast is, and here's mine. Alright, and we're ready to start writing! Here I'm working on what I hope will be my debut novel, which is a speculative mystery with the working title of Project Snow. I'm re-outlining it for what feels like the millionth time. Oh, how we love a complex story, right? And so we come to a wind down activity. Just like it's easy to start the day already in work mode, I feel like it's hard to disconnect from work at the end of the day. And I always need to make a conscious effort to spend some time doing something I love, to spend some time just relaxing and nurturing my inner child, nurturing myself. Yeah, nurturing myself. I'll be back soon. I like how this vlog compiles most of the introverted activities that keep me alive and sane, basically. Reading, writing, journaling, consuming fiction. Not just fiction, but stories in general. These things truly make me happy. Let me know what everyday activities make you happy and whether or not you've been doing them. If not, then go do them. Right now. I'll see you in my next video. Take care.